this is the point at, of no return for these two players. If you do not win your round here, you don't get to come back and play tomorrow. <laughs> and that particularly has big implications for Kyle as Kyle doesn't have a qualification for the next set championship. Now, Luca does. Luca's in the MPL. He's got those qualifications locked up, so he'll be here either way. But particularly for Kyle, if he falls off here and can't get by Luca, he is going to be kind of back to square one as far as getting qualified for the next championship. Now, there's also more on the line here, of course, points, right? Over the course of this season, they're going to track the points, and then the there's going to be a number of seats that go to the world championship based on those points and of course picking up a match one will give you three of said points but if you win this one you get to come back and play all day tomorrow which gives you a shot at another 24 oh. of those points so there's a lot on the line here how are the, how do the opening hands look paul well it just became incredible for luca now kyle mulligan and wasn't happy with his hand and luca had turn one just bare sentinel but a couple of three drops in hand but on turn two has managed to find a Magda here to be able to get an extra treasure here, kind of unlocking his hand a little bit. All right. Portable hole is going to come in handy here for Kyle. Is this a good matchup for, for Kyle or a bad matchup? I think this is a good matchup for, for Kyle. And the thing that really signals to me that this is a good matchup for Kyle is if you take a look at Luca's sideboard, I mean, he's got triple crushed a week, triple ray of enfeeblement in the sideboard for specifically this matchup. <laughs> so that tells me, you know what? Uh, I think Luca came in to this tournament basically kind of targeting is it Epiphany as a deck that he wanted to beat? And I think his deck is pretty well positioned for that. You see main deck copies of Graveyard Trespasser with that Sneakskin Veil, but I think the deck that he likely wanted to avoid uh, was the mono white aggro decks. Yeah, that you're reading the tea leaves there. That does sound like a player who wants to shore up at a, a disadvantage with some strong sideboard options. Here comes Briarbridge Tracker. And Snakeskin Veil is available here. And he may need to use it as we see Brutal Cathar go on the stack. It's going to be good here. Mm-hmm. Do you use a treasure so that you don't take as much damage or are those important to keep around? Yeah, he's gonna use up a treasure yeah. here. Yeah, that prevents any damage from getting through. Now right. Kyle can't attack with the with, with the two one here. And so, wow. <laughs> you caught Kyle's expression, but he was like, well then, I guess I will not attack you. <laughs> yeah, I will not attack. Uh, Although he, he will try this again next turn. He will. Um, I imagine Luca here probably wants to get in here with the Briar Bridge Tracker, it does have Vigilance. Kyle can choose to go for a trade here by throwing away two of his creatures. It's got to be advantageous for Luca. Also, look at this. Reckless Stormseeker card that's kind of bounced in and out of standard play. Very powerful, and against the right deck, it can be really the, the weapon of choice. And, and you see it here, adding an additional power immediately to the tracker and sending that into the red zone. Yeah, and... I mean, Kyle will have the answer for the tracker here, but even then, as it stands with what's on the battlefield, this creature's not going to be able to attack through that Reckless Stormseeker. This is kind of interesting that he casts the Stormseeker first to get the extra damage, but that information is actually big. I, I wonder if Kyle would have blocked without that Stormseeker on the battlefield. Right, and and now, I mean, Kyle can go for the the Cathar and the Stormseeker, and then I guess Luca really only has kind of that Graveyard Trespasser left. Looks like he'll start things off with a Spellbinder. That would give him the ability to trade with the Stormseeker, and he can put a pretty healthy tax on the Graveyard Trespasser as well, though, as we can see, Luca could still deploy it. He'll get a clue here, and he can use his Sentinel. Eh, no untapped land there. So it would kind of take his turn if he really wants to get the Trespasser down. Another pertinent question here is just, would he like to trade the Stormseeker for the Spellbinder? Is that is that something that he's interested in at this point? I don't think so. I mean, if anything, we might see maybe a, a, a Magda get in or something along those lines. I mean, alternatively, mm -hmm. you could also just choose to run out 
the trespasser here, right? As you do have the mana for that, and we're not the litter of the Hydra. Yeah. Just uh, kind of uses up all your stuff. But I mean, yeah, getting the Gaver a trespasser down isn't bad. It also kind of sets a interesting chain of events with it's day now, <laughs> but going to night is pretty scary for Kyle Rose. You know, both the Storm Seeker and the Trespasser would transform, and that's that's some business there. Yeah, and I mean that tres Trespasser's ability very relevant. A good good number of creatures already in the graveyard. So, and every time that that card exiles a creature, you also get that that drain ability for one, which should be pretty relevant here in this creature matchup. Yeah, certainly adds up. The Jesper Sentinel doing good work here as well, allowing the Trespasser to be cast through the tax from the Spellbinder. And then also, you got to feel that if the Spellbinder doesn't trade defensively, it'll eventually have to run into the, the Sentinel or just sit there and do nothing. Here's Redain. Fine, but maybe a little too late. Although, there's a Seekus Chariot now that I say that. But once again, the Sentinel doing work. Because he can actually still cast it. He can cast it and give it haste here. Oh, goodness. Right? And attack for five and then make a token. So, I mean, that this is just a lot of just permanence to put on the battlefield here for Luca. Seriously. And this is one of those scenarios where the mid-range deck is very at a very healthy life total. And, you know, these three and four mana spells are super powerful for Luca, And he's taking advantage. Look, he might even get in with the Trespasser as well. Yeah. So, I mean, so the way that these white aggressive strategies are supposed to kind of beat these mid-range decks are to really kind of get that quick start, curve out one, two, three. That's kind of ideally what you want to do. But Kyle, with that mulligan, you know, and not being able to curve out the way that he wanted to, I mean, this is what happens, right? If you get to this kind of mid to late game, you just kind of get overpowered by just kind of the bigger creatures that, you know, these mid-range decks can play. Yeah, and you know coming back from being behind is rarely the name of the game for the white deck it just doesn't have many cards that can kind of swing it in that favor kyle's gonna chip in for four with his two creatures and then play brutal cathar this is one of the best ways that he can come back from being behind but he's way behind yeah considering whether he wants to cast the hopeful initiate here yeah, I'm curious if he has something like a Clarion Spirit in his deck. Right, where it might be worth it to hang on to. Wow! Reckless Stormseeker oh, replaces man. the one that was just nabbed with the Brutal Cathar, and Kyle's not going to like this. <laughs> I can tell you that right now, Paul. Right, because this allows you to, again, crew up the Chariot. Give it that key five power, meaning that if even if Kyle chose to go with the double block here, he's going to lose two of his creatures. These are important creatures too. The Brutal Cathar blocking, you know, kind of spins the wheels here for Kyle Rose. It trades off one, but then he just gets it back again. I think if you're fans of Kyle Rose, the Ham TV, I'm uh, probably going to be looking for, at the very least, one copy of Intrepid Adversary. Might need multiple here though. Yeah, and he's probably going to have to just take another big hit here because, you know, if he if he trades off multiple creatures, then the adversary may not be good enough anyway. It kind of leverages the fact that you have a big board state. So I think he's going to take it. He does, and he really needs to see a card like Adversary off the top, and it's a snow-covered plains. That's certainly not going to get the job done. And we see the game get scooped up here by Kyle Rose. That's going to be Lukamani picking up game number one and you said that he's got uh got some plans for the board here yeah i mean oh it already made it into his main you see the three copies that was fast <laughs> that was really fast ray of enfeeblement <laughs> along with the three crop copies of of crushed a week so those came in instantly and so i mean things are going to get a lot more difficult here with for for kyle is you know just have having the threat of your pot potentially having a sweeper just makes it that much more difficult to play around. Paul, I was play talking against, to rather. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to our friend, pro, pro tour historian, former coverage guy, Brian David Marshall, and he he told me that Kyle, this is this is really spanning the decades here. He won US Nationals in 1999 
and he was playing white weenie, which is a ancient predecessor, uh, you know, to these type of decks. And, you know, that is something that <laughs> I would imagine exactly BDM would be the person who would know that information. <laughs> uh, so glad that uh, he's still uh, showing up in coverage and giving us uh, these nice pearls of uh, information here. But uh, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, Kyle Rose, this this is a player who had quite the resume from back in the day. You know, he has, I believe, four Pro Tour top apes from way back when. Yeah, including and, a victory. In, including a victory. And he's a national champion. So he, uh, he had a lot, a lot of success a long time ago. And, you know, now he's make, trying to make a name for himself again, right? Qualifying for this event and, uh, you know, primarily focuses on limited. But, of course, and, and managed to qualify for this event through a limited qualifier. Uh, but, you know, still making a run here and, uh, you know, would really like to see another win here from Kyle to try to keep it going and uh, see if he can kind of uh, uh, get a, get an additional qualification. Got a tough opponent here, though, Luca. He's not in the, in the MPL on a fluke. He's put up good results consistently for a number of years now. Incidentally... Luca's also an excellent limited player. <laughs> Weren't we looking at the at the info sheet earlier, Paul, with with the uh, checking out their rankings? Yeah, they both have hit. They they, they have both hit rank one on the limited ladder. So they're. Uh, right. I would actually just love to see both of them kind of go at it and draft. Yeah, and I guess I'm not surprised that both of them chose decks that hinge on combat as well, yeah. right? Like this is a familiar territory for both of them. Usher of the Fallen's going to kick things off for Kyle. And he's got Thalia guarding a Thraben to follow up. That could be annoying, but, you know, Luca also plays a lot of creatures and stuff and probably can, can afford to play around it a bit. Kyle needs a land really badly here. Oof. And instead he found a card that the, kind of is mana hungry. <laughs> yeah, the Thalia tax actually affecting him as well here as yeah. cannot cast that Circle of Confinement to get that Werewolf Pack Leader off the battlefield. Perfect mana here for Luca. He just has all three colors on turn three, just Jundatroning it up. And let's see what his plays are. He can play either the Trespasser or the Stormseeker here. Yeah, and this Crush the Week, at least with what's on the board right now, looks uh, like it can be pretty devastating here, right? I mean, you, it, you get to keep your pack leader and just kill all three creatures on Kyle's side of the battlefield. Yeah, he can foretell it here and then guarantee casting it next turn. And <laughs> the window is closing very quickly here on Kyle Rose as that missed land drop already gave Luca the the edge. Yeah, and I mean, just thinking about it, I think Luca's just thinking, okay, so what can Kyle play here where Crush the Weak won't just completely blow him out here? I don't oh, think... Oh, did you see that look from Kyle? <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, He saw it's... it going to foretell. He's like, well, <laughs> I know what that one, one card. Is. Yeah. <laughs> He did find a snow-covered plains, but it might be too late. What is he supposed to do? Run out of Brutal Cathar into a Crush the Week? Yeah, I Can't think the only, that. the only play here for Kyle is probably just running out that Circle of Confinement. He knows that that card is a Crush the Week. So just cast the Confinement to get the pack leader off the battlefield and then just get in for seven and, uh, and uh, rebuild here. That's, That's right. what we're going to see. He does have two creatures to put back on the battlefield. There's land number four for Luca. It doesn't really change a whole lot here, although he could be more mana efficient and just hard cast Crush the Week out of his hand. It does yeah. give Kyle some pretty important information, though, be because he's not running other foretell cards, but it looks like he'd rather just say, look, it doesn't matter if you know, right? right. Like, what are you going to do, <laughs> oh, not man. play creatures? <laughs> and Kyle has to watch, oh, <laughs> boy, his board get wiped away, and he knows that that's the second copy of crush the week from luca luca wanted to shore up this matchup and he put the cards in his sideboard to do it and he's drawn them yeah and, and you know th this isn't like the historic uh the historic version of the mono white the, the white aggressive strategies where you can recover from a sweeper against the standard version i mean it is pretty backbreaking Seriously, that was a three for one into a two for one, and he gets to double spell this turn and get in for three damage to knock Kyle back down to 20. Ugh, there's a spell spellbinder, okay. 
That at yeah, least could but, trade, I but mean, look at the hand. Look, look at that. You take one chair, they'll just play the other one. This yeah. is really tough here for Kyle. He's got to be thinking, what, what was I supposed to do against this draw? He's probably going to fire up a draft here. And just forget about this. Uh, forget that this ever happened. Just yeah, I mean, drown, drown yourself in a draft. Yeah, I've been there. I know. I know what that <laughs> feels like. And now we're going to see that play that we saw in the in the prior game here. The chariot's going to be the recipient of the reckless storm seeker trigger, and he's going to get a copy and even jam in with the storm seeker. All of it's going to come through. Down to thirteen goes Kyle Rose, and surely he can't find a way out from here. He's got a brutal Cathar, but he drew a planes for the turn. He is attacking with his elite spellbinder. Down to eight goes Luca. So his life total did get a little low, but he's going to get overran by cats here. Yeah, and remember, we also have the trespasser that can do the drain for one, or you can just run out the chariot, right, just to get an additional two cats onto the battlefield. A storm seeker wouldn't be bad here either. He's got one of those under yeah. under tax. I I think he could close his eyes. <laughs> just cast like, cards at random just start casting stuff and it would probably be fine he just is overwhelming kyle at this point right the two well-timed sweepers and then he's just hitting with these hammers i mean asika's cherry gets to come in again yeah I, and again luca is at eight so he does need to just think about how he can potentially lose this game right Elite mm -hmm. Spellbinder, he doesn't have a way to deal with the Elite Spellbinder. So if Luca maybe finds a way to put a counter on the Spellbinder next turn, that that could potentially give a window here for Kyle. Yeah, it looks like Luca has no chill. He's just attacking with everything he possibly can. Kyle's going to fall down to four. Illuminarch Aspirant. He just needed to survive not for one quite, more turn, but he's yeah. not going to be able to do it. Heartbreak here for Kyle Rose as Luka Manyi defeats him and earns his spot 